Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Wisco Whiskey Review. My name's Jeff, and today it's the first episode in a new series that I'm calling Cocktail Corner. Now, this is gonna be about the 1862 British tax evasion scandal and the implications that <laughs> Now, it's about cocktails. This whole thing's about cocktails. And I'm gonna start with the Manhattan. So, the Manhattan is one of the original classic cocktails that's recognized officially by the IBA, or the International Bar Tenders Association. So, this is one that dates back way, way back. I know a lot of my videos lately have been pretty long, so I'm gonna to try to keep this short and sweet, but I do wanna give a brief history before I kinda of go into this, show you how to make it. Um, I think it just adds to the experience. Um, I don't know if that's just me, but I'm a history buff and I like that stuff. Uh, I'll add chapters to this. You can skip ahead if you wanna skip the history bit. But just to kinda of go over that real quick, um, this was invented circa 1860 to 1880. Nobody knows for sure. The story that kind of most people perpetuate this with is that it was invented at the Manhattan Bar, which is the name of the bar, in New York City during the 1870s at a banquet that was hosted by Winston Churchill's mother. Now, she was a, uh, an American socialite before she moved over to Britain, you know, married Winston Churchill's father and became a British socialite. But that's the rumor. Uh, I don't think it's true. A lot of people regard it as a, you know, story of fiction, um, but it is, you know, pretty well regarded to be, have been invented around that time in New York or around New York. So I aged in Manhattan uh, for about two weeks. I think it was about 15 days to be specific in this barrel. Um, you know, I made it up um, and I just kind of poured all the ingredients in it. So the reason I'm going with the Manhattan over the old fashioned uh, for the first one of the series, which actually the old fashioned is my favorite, is because I received this really cool mini chart oak barrel for Christmas from my fiance. And I thought it would be a cool experiment to barrel age a cocktail in this and compare it to you know a regular cocktail that hasn't been barrel aged. Now you can do that with an old fashioned as well, but I've made tons of old fashions, so I thought I'd you know, switch it up and do something different. So I chose the Manhattan. It's kind of similar, but I'll go over the ingredients list here for you right now. So it's a really easy cocktail to make. It's really simple. I think that's why it's considered a classic is because it's kind of like a template cocktail where you know it has the ingredients, but you can tweak it and change things a million different ways to kind of fine tune it to what you like. So this has two parts whiskey, one part vermouth, a few dashes of bitters, and then you garnish it with cherries. There's another version called the Perfect Manhattan, which just takes the vermouth and splits it in half where half of that one part of vermouth is dry and half of that one part of vermouth is uh, sweet vermouth. So you'd have like two ounces of whiskey, have half an ounce of dry, half an ounce of sweet, and that's considered a perfect Manhattan. The traditional way to make it actually would be to build it in a, a mixing glass, which I don't have. Those are usually made of glass. They're a little bit wider um, and taller, so you can fit a lot of ingredients in there. You know, mix up three or four cocktails worth of stuff if you want, and then strain them out. I don't have a mixing glass, but I do have a cocktail shaker. And if you have something like this, you know, just your plain stainless steel cocktail shaker with a uh, strainer. Um, I think this is called a Hawthorne strainer, if I remember correctly. You can easily build it in this too. So what you would do is put your ice in here, uh, build the drink, and then you would just kind of stir it with a bar spoon, which looks like this. And I recommend getting one of these if you like making cocktails. It just makes, um, it makes the stirring process a lot easier, and I'll show you that here in a second. But you'd build it in the, the shaker or the mixer, um, over ice, you strain it into a chilled cocktail glass or a chilled martini glass. And that would be the traditional way to make it. Now the way that I make it is just slightly different and it is kind of closely, more resembles the old fashioned, but you would just build it in a rocks glass and drink it with that. It kind of saves on dishes, it's a little bit easier, um, it's just not as fancy looking. But I think it serves the purpose just as well, it's just not as fancy. So I'm just going to show you that method here again. Hopefully I've explained the other one well enough where you can make it that way if you're you know, entertaining guests or something like that want to kind of zhuzh it up a bit. So here we go. I'm going to show you how to make a traditional Manhattan and then I will compare it to uh, the one that I already 
barrel aged and bottled here in this uh, this cool Star Wars Stormtrooper decanter. So like I said, this was already aged about 15 days or so in this mini oak barrel. And because the barrel is a little bit smaller, uh, it imparts that oak character a little bit quicker. So the first step is to locate the ice tunnels. All right, I finally get to use this ice container. Another reason I don't like living on a busy street. All right, so the first step's gonna be to put some ice in a rocks glass. Once you've done that, you go two parts whiskey. And I'd also like to mention that I used I'm using the same exact ingredients that I used for this Manhattan, which was barrel aged, as I'm making this one with too. So I'm using Evan Williams Bottled and Bond uh, White Label. It's 100 proof. It's aged at least four years. I believe it's in that you know four to five range, maybe six. I figured this was a you know really good whiskey to kind of make this with. It you know the proof stands up to everything else, mixes well with things. So you can use any kind of whiskey you like. Uh, you can use rye, like I stated, you can use bourbon. I just tend to like bourbon, it's a little bit sweeter of a flavor, so that's what I went with. All right, so two ounces of bourbon. If you spill a little bit like I did, that's fine. Just uh, seasons the, the cutting board here a little bit. We're gonna do one ounce of sweet vermouth. Now, one thing I'll mention too, is that the ratios can be adjusted slightly, so you know, whatever, you know, if you want the whiskey to stand out a little bit more and be more of a whiskey forward drink, you can certainly cut down the vermouth or bump the whiskey up. That's perfectly fine. If you want more of a vermouth forward uh, cocktail or, you know, have that vermouth stand out a little bit if you have a really fancy vermouth. Um, I'm using something, it's a little cheaper. Uh, this is just Gallo or Gallo. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, it's from California. It's you know, it's one of the, the cheaper options in my neck of the woods here. And then uh, just a few dashes of bitters. I'm using uh, Fee Brothers, old fashioned bitters. Uh, you can use uh, Angostura is kind of the, you know, classic old fashioned bitters. So a few dashes of that. All right, so now we've got the whiskey, the vermouth and the bitters all in there. And now we're just gonna stir it for a little bit. Now you can use uh, regular ice cubes. You can use an ice ball, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, but this bar spoon is really nice because um, it's kind of the the pattern and the metalwork allows you to get that nice uh, stirring action so that essentially you want the the face of the spoon or you know the top of it facing the inside at all times so essentially you're rotating the spoon and that kind of keeps everything together and centered without making a mess so uh, you can use a regular spoon you don't have to have a bar spoon here but um, it is important to stir it um, you know, at least for, I'd say 10 to 30 seconds. What that does is it chills down everything uh, to make it cold, but then it also just incorporates all the ingredients together. Now an ice ball is a little less noisy than this, but you get the idea. So I stir this for about 15 seconds or so. Set this down and uh, we'll garnish this with a cherry. Now you can use any cherries you want. You can use just the, the bright red uh, maraschino cherries. Um, I tend to like using uh, either brandy cherries, uh, Luxardo cherries, some sort of like, you know, a little bit fancier cocktail cherry. Uh, the ones I'm going with today are the Woodford Reserve cherries. So these are in a Woodford Reserve uh, bourbon sauce or I guess syrup. Drop it in there like that. And there you go, that's a Manhattan. So what I'm gonna do now I'll let this sit for just a few seconds. I'm going to pour the barrel aged one in the same type of glass with the same amount of ice cubes and everything. So we'll keep everything as close to similar as I can. Put some cherries in there and then I'll compare them. All right, so here we go. We'll just pour this over ice. It's the weekend, so you know, what's two cocktails, right? Put some cherries in here. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to stir this one as well, just to kind of bring the temperature down. Again, kind of like I said with that one, 
Um, it just helps dilute it just a little bit, bring it down to temperature so that it chills it nicely. All right, so now we have our two Manhattans here. Now this one, again, was traditionally made just with uh, your vermouth, your whiskey, your bitters, ice, and garnish with cherries. The one on the left here, or I guess it'd be probably your right if you're looking at it, um, is the barrel aged version. Now again, I made it with a two to one ratio of the exact same whiskey, the exact same vermouth, the exact same bitters. Um, the bitters, you kind of have to you know, kind of math it out a little bit to figure out exactly how much you want to put in there to taste. But all three of those ingredients went into this barrel when I barrel aged it. And again, that was 15 days of aging. So let's look at the color here. Um, you know, they're about the same. I wouldn't say that it's a whole lot darker. You know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I was expecting it to be a little bit darker, but I'm thinking it might come out, the differences might come out a little bit more in the flavor. So let's try the first one here. It smells like a Manhattan. It's got that, you know, that whiskey, that kind of wine, sweet fruit flavor going on. Yep, that hits the spot. That's a Manhattan. Yeah, like I said, I think any kind of bottled and bond bourbon just really shines through and stands out on its own on this cocktail. Again, you can use whatever whiskey you want. I've heard rye is really good if you want kind of more of a spicier, kind of herbal uh, taste going. Um, but for me, again, I just like that sweetness that bourbon offers. So now let's try the barrel aged one. All right, so even just from the nose alone, I can tell that there's a big difference between the two of them. This one has much more of, a, of an oak. It's got that like charred American oak scent going on. Now, hopefully I didn't over oak this. Uh, that's something you can easily do if you leave something in a, especially a mini barrel, just because there's so much more uh, surface area for the liquid in a mini barrel like that. That's why, you know, large distillers use bigger barrels. It's one of the reasons. It's just harder to, to over oak things. So let's try it. Oh yeah, that is definitely different. You really get that, that kind of the woodiness when you barrel age this. I can, I can see now why people recommend that. It gives it, I don't want to say a completely different flavor because you can still tell it's a Manhattan, but it gives it this other note that you do not get at all in, you know, if you don't barrel age it. Yeah, the regular one is just bright, it's fruity, you know, it, it has just a slight bit of uh, oakiness, I guess, or winniness from the bourbon because that's been barrel aged, you know, for four to five years, but it's nothing like if you take it, build it, and, uh, and age it yourself in a barrel. Yeah, that oak presence, I mean, you can't miss it. I wouldn't say that me personally, that I've over oaked this one. Um, I tend to like, uh, you know, oaky wines, like ports. Um, I tend to like that, that char flavor. So to me, this is really well balanced. It's really nice. Again, just that extra step, you know, and these I, I believe are, you know, probably around that uh, $100, $150 range, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Um, you know, you can buy these online. There's different retailers that offer them. So I think this is a fantastic experiment. I think this turned out really well. If you want to go ahead and do this, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I just like the variation. I like the difference that it gives. You know, this you can easily share with friends. Um, they make bigger barrels than this too, so you can experiment with different size barrels and you know, maybe build the same thing in it and see kind of what that does. I guess to kind of wrap this up, you know, um, this is a Manhattan. Again, it's two parts whiskey, one part sweet vermouth, a few dashes of bitters, and garnished with cherries. It's pretty simple. You know, you can mess around with the ratios, you can mess around with different, um, adding different ingredients, different liqueurs, you know, just a quarter ounce of something here, half ounce of something there. You can really make it your own. So thanks again for watching guys. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe down below. Uh, if you really like Manhattans, if you have a variation that you know you make that you really like, uh, share it down below. You know, I'll, I'm always looking down for uh, to try new recipes, try new cocktail uh, recipes and everything. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll go with the barrel aged one here. Cheers guys, keep on sipping.